Welcome to Contemporary Retirement. Contemporary Retirement is a public interest program focused on the retirement community. Every program has segments on legal, financial, and health issues affecting the retirement community. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a major grant from the Family Heritage Trust Company. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored by Family Heritage Trust Company. The Family Heritage Trust Company is an independent bank chartered trust company established by local professionals to provide fiduciary services including fee-based investment advice, trust services, retirement planning, and tax planning. The Family Heritage Trust Company is committed to client service and our communities. For more information, call the Family Heritage Trust Company at 301-631-5900. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a grant from R. Thomas Murphy & Associates, P.C. R. Thomas Murphy & Associates is one of Franklin County's leading law firms, emphasizing estate, trust, elder law, and medical assistance planning. Welcome to the Is It Legal feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various legal issues which are of importance to the retirement community. With me today is Tom Murphy from the R. Thomas Murphy Law Firm with offices in Waynesboro, Chambersburg, and McConnellsburg. Welcome to the show, Tom. Good morning, Mike. Tom, we were talking about putting kids' names on houses last mm -hmm. week. Everybody knows that's the right thing to do. Let's talk about the impact for married couples, a quick recap. Well, the first issue is that an asset which is typically protected in a, in a, if one of the nursing or one of the spouses goes to the nursing home now creates a penalty by that gift where they would where they'd be eligible, now they're not for a period of time. But everybody knows there's liens against houses. Well, if you do it properly and you move it to the healthy spouse, there are absolutely no liens whatsoever. But I heard you can't transfer within five years of going to a nursing home. Well, you do it every day, and so no limitations spouses, on spouses. No limitation between spouses. You do it every day. And then the problem is, of course, if anything bad happens in the child's life. Suppose mm -hmm. the child has a creditor problem. Well, exactly. Now that parent whose child's on their deed has a creditor problem, and the creditor can get at the house. Absolutely, and so you just create a risk unnecessarily. How about an automobile accident not properly insured? Same deal. Now that that victim, that plaintiff, can go after that house. Uh, suppose the child dies. Oh, well, then we got a big problem. Potential tax and loss of control because that child's will is going to dictate where mom or dad's house goes. Or a portion of interest in that house A portion, goes. yeah. Any. So it would be going to uh, their spouse or it would be going to minor children? Minor children or anybody subject to the, the guardianship of some other person. So, you know, that, all these issues just start to come about. And part of the problem is, is the assumption that the family is always going to keep that house. You mm -hmm. know, people say every day, we're keeping that house. Well, the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is you don't know that. You know, you can have a health issue that could cause that to change. You have all these extra owners now. Now you need all of them to join into the sale of that property. Exactly. And so if you have mom and four kids, you could have one child who can block the sale where everybody agrees. Or you could have a situation in which one of your children has predeceased you and now you have minor grandchildren as partial owners of that house. Right. And so you've got this this messy issue that, you know, no one ever thought through when they did the simple deed and just signing a name. And then you have people do this, well, I'm gonna do it in my fifties so that it's all taken care of. I don't have to worry about the five year rule or anything else. And then the parent says, well, you know, I need to go get a home equity line in order to, you know, build an addition to the mm -hmm. house because I need to make it, you know, yeah. you know, compatible for wheelchairs and so forth. Who has to sign on that yeah. deed of trust for that house? Well, if it's well, the bankrupt son, the son, or whoever is that joint owner, because they're all going to be bound by that mortgage, and they all have to be credit worthy. And one of the problems is, is you got children who so say, I don't want to sign on any loan for the parent's house. Well, the fact is, you put them on the property, they now have to sign. Exactly. And that's really difficult for people to understand because they think it's just this little informal thing, but it really has all the formalities and the legal effect when you transfer real estate. And then we talked briefly about it last week, and that is, uh, you know, you sell that house, mm -hmm. the parents who reside in the house can all probability sell it tax free. But the child who's not resided with their parents in 20 years, their interest in the sale of the house is subject to tax. Right. And so that means you've got whatever capital gains rate that's going to be applied to that child. And if it's being sold because there is a long-term care issue, that child's able to give back a lot less than if the parents paid no tax. Well, then we have another issue here is that, you know, you have these people's names on the house. You do this life estate deed. So well, I'll solve that problem. We'll use the life estate deed. Well, that house needs a roof. Right. Who's supposed to pay for the roof? Well, supposedly the life tenant, mom, dad, whoever's there. Well, they pay the, the 
operating expenses, but capital costs would be by the children because they are the real ultimate owners and, and they're not going to pony up. For well, a that's roof. the point is the, the kids are going, it's not my roof, it's mom's problem. You let her take care of the roof. And so it just doesn't work real well. And then, you know, sooner or later, you know, they, they end up there wrong. They, they don't, they're not able to stay in that house. So if you subsequently sell that house, some of the proceeds will end up having to go back to the parents, maybe at a time where it's not nearly as beneficial as it would have been had you handled it appropriately to begin with. Right. In most cases, it's not necessary. It's just this extra thing that creates risk, and it's probably not a good idea in most instances. Well, people say, well, we'll just keep it until mom or dad die. Well, then you realize you're sitting there with a house owned by three kids waiting for mom or dad to die. You have to make a choice. Are you going to rent it? And if you rent it, you have people in it who are not likely to take care of it. <laughs> and more importantly, the state's not going to allow you to keep all the rent. Well, exactly. If mom or dad has an interest in it, they are entitled to that income. And so try maintaining a house, pay taxes, and maintain everything else with no way of paying for it except out of your own pocket. And we oftentimes find children, you know, maybe the first three months, six months, they're okay with it, but they find themselves three, four years down the line on this deal, they've had it, you know, just get rid of that thing. And now some of the benefits that came from the life estate deed then go away. Oh, absolutely. And they start doing the math on their carrying costs and they realize their interest in the place is dwindling pretty quickly. Well, Tom, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. You're welcome. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Few things in life are as important as family. Leave your insurance worries to us. Write Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. Every life that meets its end leaves a heart for love to mend. Sister, brother, family, friends are left to carry on. When the loss seems more than you. Call Ed Lowe to help put your mind at ease. Welcome to the special guest feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various issues which are of importance to the retirement community. My guest today is Taylor Oliver, president of Oliver Homes. Taylor, Oliver Homes has been around a long time. That's true. We actually started in 1948. We've been in business now for uh, 67 years. And like I said, we uh, built about 3,000 new homes in the tri-state area. So we're still working at it, improving and doing new things a little bit better this year than last year and trying to keep improving what we do. One of the interesting things about your company, I actually met your dad almost 40 years ago. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're in the forefront of always looking how to build houses better, more efficiently, and, and more efficiently for the customer as well. I can remember seeing your dad in your factory style being almost the first ones that started building certain components of the house off-site. Yeah, we were actually probably one of the first people to actually do more of the wall panels and, and then we are take take the wall panels out to the site to set them and that type of thing. It's not a manufactured situation. It's just a matter of we're able to build them in a conditioned area and without weather, without other things that interfere with that. It makes it a little simpler and a little quicker and easier and uh, I think a benefit. So when you're building those walls, it doesn't matter whether you build it in a dry factory environment or whether you build it out on the site getting rained on, you're still doing exactly the same construction technique. Exactly the same construction. The nice thing is your walls are not getting rained on if you're building them out on the site. And part of the thing that was interesting there is that, you know, I know that you guys have always paid attention to building trends. I know that you're very focused on building energy efficient homes. Correct. That is correct. I mean, we're doing all of our new homes now have two by six exterior walls. We're doing R21 and all of our side walls. We do an, what's a, known as an R49 insulation package in the ceiling. So it's dramatically better than what it would have been even two or three years ago. So uh, in addition to that, we do a lot of ceiling and, and, and that type of thing where we do uh, house wrap all the way around on all our homes. And it, it's a lot nice, nicer product for sure. I also know you've been very focused on making sure that electrical efficiencies as well. Yes, uh, we do 
a number of different things within like the, our heat pump situations. Those have actually all increased. My home was built in 1998 and I upgraded and went to a higher efficiency uh, heating system, which was a 12 sear system. We're now standard putting 14 sear systems in even right now. And if somebody wants to upgrade, they could upgrade to like a 16 sear or even more. So it's dramatically better than what it was even when my home was built. Lighting. Lighting is an improved type situation also. I mean, we're seeing a lot more of the LED lighting. We see a lot more of, uh, obviously, the compact fluorescent type lighting. So, I mean, that is a, a just an improved area also. So, all the way throughout the, the structure, there's a lot of improvements from year to year. Now, a lot of our constituency watching this program is older and think we're not building any new houses, but the reality is you're very engaged in upgrading existing housing both for energy but also for safety. That's correct. I mean, we do a number of different things. And, and I know we've talked a little bit about even in the lighting thing, just changing different types of light bulbs around. You can retrofit some of those things. And then as we talk in terms of safety type things, whether it's a matter of a, uh, of a remodel type situation or just a matter of doing something that makes a little bit of sense where you deal with the threshold or you deal with something where you, you just minimize that area of exposure where somebody could trip or fall or something to that nature. Let's have Greg pull up some pictures here. And I, we have here, a, this is kind of a, kind of a standard uh, 70s style bathroom here. That's right. You see a lot of the, the blues and pinks and the tile and, and that type thing. This was a bath that we had actually done. And uh, you can see, you know, you see the blue toilet, you see the tub. And in that tub situation there... Uh, Looks like about a 24-inch step over. That's right. It's a, usually about a 20-inch step, and it's hard to get in and out of. There's not anything to grab hold of. Then as we actually replace that, you can see, one, we have the new, newer toilet there. Uh, that toilet, as we talked about, you're going from a 5-gallon flush toilet to a 1.6-gallon flush toilet at a minimum, and they've actually been proved that. And then the shower, you go on from that ledge there of a 20-inch ledge, you go to that shower ledge where now you only have about a 4-inch ledge to get in. Uh, so there's some dramatic improvements, a lot more safe and, and accessible than what it would, would have ever been before. I think one thing that's interesting, the standard on those walk-ins is 4-inch, but you don't have to have 4-inch. No, that's correct. I mean, normally it's about a 4-inch, but we have gone to some of those where, you know, we've changed that around and you can go to uh, almost any number. I mean, they do make one that's only a half inch, but uh, our concern on that is just whether to keep the water in the tub drain area. So, you know, we usually try to go up to maybe a couple inches on that, and it really conceals that and makes it so you don't have water coming out on the floor. Taylor's always, thanks for taking time to appear on our program. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Tranquility at Fredericktown Assisted Living and Memory Care provides a warm, home-like atmosphere that promotes daily life enrichment. At Tranquility, our medical director is a geriatric physician. Our professionals support and understand the various stages associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. We have on-site physical, occupational, and speech therapists, as well as around-the-clock licensed nurses. For more information, give Tranquility at Fredericktown a call today, because everyone deserves great care. Let us do the caregiving so you and your loved one can embrace life again. Dad, Dad, there's the big one. There's just, the big one. Just wait, just wait. There's the monster. Just, just one more bid on hurryauctions.com. I got it, I got it, I got it. If you haven't visited hurryauctions.com, you don't know what you're missing. Whether you're buying or selling, antique cars, tractors, boats, or real estate, you can do it all at hurleyauctions.com. Get to know Dr. Carrie Hesley at Diagnostic Imaging Services. What I find most rewarding is caring for women through our Women's Imaging Center. We have a caring staff that will ease patients through an ultrasound, bone densitometry, breast biopsy, or mammogram. Our health team is sensitive to emotions involved in women's imaging and understands that every woman is at risk for breast cancer. Providing the community with a center that is so dedicated to breast health and the imaging needs of women is something special. DIS Women's Imaging Center, providing women with progressive care. Welcome to Contemporary Health Scene. Contemporary Health Scene focuses on the health issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Dorothy Reddick, Director of Nursing, Greenfield Assisted Living. Welcome to the show, Dorothy. Thank you, sir. Now, Dorothy, you've had a long history in the assisted living. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, I've worked at m many different assisted livings in the area, 
and I feel like where I'm at right now is the best place. All right, so that's a green field. Yes, sir. All right, now one of the things that I like about Greenfield is is that its model is really desired levels. Uh, oftentimes you can't tell the difference between the visitors and the patients. And that's so true. So that's why we make sure that our, we have the security that we have. But on the other hand, it gives them a lot of choices. They have a lot of flexibility in what they can choose to do during the day and a fair amount of flexibility in terms of not leaving the facility but moving about within the facility. They do. They have a great courtyard area in that neighborhood and they are able to go out there and walk around and socialize with each other. All right, and then uh, of course everybody wants to say, are they getting fed okay? They sure are. <laughs> <laughs> And they have access to snacks and yes. the sorts of things that they would have just as if they were in their home. Yes, they do have access to snacks and we have water and things setting out for them and juices all during the day so they have access to that at all times. Now we're going to bring up some pictures here too because pictures always tell a thousand stories but this is a, is a room here that a person obviously can bring their own furniture to. They can have their own personal effects and that sort of thing within their room. Yes, sir. They can bring things from home to make it more familiar for them. And oftentimes, you know, those particularly those family pictures and so forth go a long way toward the person settling in. Yes, it makes them feel more at home. All right, and so the common areas here have some very nice uh, furniture and that sort of thing. And I know that, you know, really those areas are fairly sizable. This doesn't really do justice to it, that people can get out of their rooms and spend time with both staff and other residents. Yes, sir. They, there's, I feel like we have a lot of open spaces for them to get out and enjoy the areas that we have. All right, and then you have a, sort of the middle neighborhood there. Tell us a little bit about it. That's our Oak neighborhood. They may require a little more assistance than the people in our Maple neighborhood, and that's okay because that's what we're there for, but they also still have a quality of life that's good for them. And it also kind of keeps them from feeling like uh, they're separated. You know, they're, they're still interacting with people who have capabilities of interacting so they don't feel like they're isolated. No, they actually can join in in the courtyard area too of the Maple neighborhood. All right, and then uh, we have the other neighborhood which is that neighborhood in which people need a lot of service. Yes, they require more help with all of their ADLs and Activities daily. daily living. Right, okay. And, um, but they still can socialize and with the other residents. We have residents that like to walk because we have a long hallway there and they just enjoy walking up and down the hallway. The whole point and is the point of other activities as well. And to keep them as engaged as possible because that at the end of the day gives them the greatest chance of higher quality of life longer into that dementia process. Yes, sir. We want them to keep them stimulated at all as much as possible. Now, I know you've uh, kind of really upgraded, you know, the professional service model there. Tell us a little bit about it. We have um, the highest ratio of staff members towards our residents versus our staff. Yes, yeah, some outside consulting services yes, as we well. Yes, we do. We have brought in counterpoint mental health services that are coming in to evaluate all of our residents and working to improve their lives. I know that uh, you have a passion for this and, and you know your staff has a passion for it so when you have a high staff ratio and a passion for taking care of people who have this particular affliction that is the best combination of giving them the best possible care. Yes, my passion is caring for people with memory issues and my staff, I have a lot of longevity there they really do have a passion for the caring of the Alzheimer's dementia patients. Dorothy, I want to thank you for taking time to appear on our show. How could they find out more information about Greenfield? We are at 310 Cameo Drive and our phone number is 301-766-9202. And anytime, just give us a call or come stop by. And stop by without an appointment? Yes, sir. Dorothy, thanks for taking time. Thank you, sir. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up. 
it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. I have wanted to be a teacher ever since first grade. Without the Mary and Ruth Smith scholarship, I would not be successful as a growing adult. Do you wish to make a difference in the lives of others? You can, and you don't have to be wealthy to impact future generations. Start your legacy at the Community Foundation and impact lives just as Mary and Ruth Smith have done. Thank you to the Community Foundation for believing in me and providing me the opportunity to become successful with my goals. Albright, Crumbacker, Mal, and I tell are a full-service firm that provides elder care services, including managing incoming bills, bill payment, depositing checks, balancing bank statements, and preparing, planning, and filing personal tax returns. Put your mind at ease and call us today. Welcome to the Making Sense feature on Contemporary Retirement. Making Sense focuses on the financial issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Christian Wright, president of Wright Gardner Insurance. Welcome to the show, Christian. Thank you, Michael. Wright Gardner's been around a little while. We have. We just celebrated our 101st anniversary, so uh, it's quite amazing, and we're very appreciative of our clients and the local community that has supported us over the years. Now, you're an independent agent, which means you broker many different companies. Right, right. We, we are not beholden to one insurance company. We represent, you know, probably 20-some insurance companies, and that gives us the ability to uh, meet different clients needs and one of the things that we challenge clients with is that companies are not good at everything any more so than an orthopedic surgeon doesn't do dental work and a podiatrist doesn't replace knees and so one of the things people need to be aware of is that big common carriers are tend to be very focused on certain types of coverages but it doesn't make them good at everything exactly and that that's a that's a great point about working with an independent agent because you know your specific needs may change it may change rapidly so you know if you can have an independent who can match up your needs with those carriers, you know, that's just a lot easier. One of the problems we have with the common carriers is, is that they tend to license their agents to very specific geographic mm -hmm. areas, partially designed to protect the agents in a joining area, so they're not competing against each other. Well, in, this, in our viewership area here, where we have four states in very close proximity, that doesn't work very well when people have properties across lines. Right, it doesn't work well. And that's, um, that can create a very difficult situation for an insured. Now they have to go in that situation, have to go find another agent, another insurance carrier. Sometimes it's the same company with two different <laughs> agents. It is, and that's, that's really quite, quite frustrating. So you're, now you're paying two premiums with the same carrier. You know, you can eliminate all of that by working with an independent agent. And then, of course, we have the snowbirds that own property in Florida. They want an umbrella policy. And if you use the common carriers, you end up with two policies. Two policies, two premiums. And you can avoid that by working with an independent. Now, I look at homeowner's policies for our, every client. And many times when I see several different events we're going to mention here, mm -hmm. I know the policy is almost always wrong. Everybody likes to put the kids' names on the house. They think it's a great idea for taxes, which it's not. They think it's a great idea for Medicaid, which it's not. But what they have done is they've now had new owners. Most of the time they forget to change the homeowner's policy. And that's so critical that they tell their insurance agent what they've done because they could have a very severe situation when they have a claim. Well, let's just take a real simple example. Mm -hmm. It's a $100,000 house. Mm -hmm. The parents own half in some manner of speaking. The kids own half. The house burns down. Well, only the parents' interest was insured when you changed the policy. And the company fully pays the parents' interest but does not pay the kids' interest. Exactly. And that's a, that's a, that's a perfect example which can be avoided from the very beginning. Just call your agent, tell them what changes you're making in your life, and they can make sure that you have the correct policies in place. And these people use these life estate deeds, and they think, well, because I continue to live in the property, I'm the only person that needs to be insured. But there's actually a remainder interest that's going to the kids, and it's not insured if you don't put the kids on that policy. Exactly. I mean, the insurance policy is a legal contract, so you're absolutely right. Uh, Michael, when you change when you change the intent of that, you have to let someone know. And the irony of this is, it doesn't cost anything in most instances. No, it's it's just a, it costs a phone call. You know, it takes some time, but no, it doesn't. There's no charge for the number of named insureds that you have on a policy. We got trust. Everybody loves trust. Mm -hmm. We already know the trusts are not very helpful in medical assistance planning, but they put that house into the trust. 
they never bother to let the agent know that mm. there is a new owner. The new owner is the trust. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, trusts have their place, and trust is an entity in and of itself. And you're right, it's the exact same thing as having a child, you know, come back and live with you. And you have to tell your insurance agent so they can make the carrier aware. And, and sometimes there are carriers out there that will not write insurance for trusts, and that can be a big problem. And so the point is, once again, it typically doesn't involve any significant cost differential, if any, but you have to have the right owner listed on the homeowner's policy. Exactly, and do it before you have a claim. No one knows when they're going to have a claim, so you want to make these changes before. Now, you mentioned children coming home. You know, mm -hmm. oftentimes children do come home in our society today, so that means there's risk exposure to that child being there. They may have personal property that mm -hmm. has value. It's not covered under the parent's homeowner's policy anymore. Absolutely not. Only when they are, are of, of minor age and up to a, a early 20s and in school. When they come back, no, that's their property, and you need to, again, address that with your agent. Easily addressed, too. If the, if the child has valuables, they can get a renter's policy mm -hmm. that covers them. Very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the thing with renter's policy is not just the property, Michael. There's another side to it, which is the liability insurance. So, you know, if someone's injured due to the negligence of the child, that tenant policy is going to cover them. All right, so once again, we caution people, any sort of change in the ownership, and it doesn't matter that nothing significant, that furniture didn't move or anything else, you may have had an alteration in your coverage. Exactly. Make that call to your agent. Let them know of the changes so they can take care of you. Christian, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on our program. Absolutely. Thank you from Contemporary Retirement. Remember a more carefree time? Leave your insurance worries to us, Wright Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. These days it seems like everything's online and filling out claim forms and receiving and paying bills online isn't always easiest. That's why we at Quality First Insurance encourage you to just give us a call. Let us help. Hi there, I'm Paul Sweeney with Quality First Insurance and it's still just this simple. Our offices are open every weekday where you'll be able to call and speak to real live people. No detail was missed. I'm so glad that I turned to Quality First Insurance. I've recommended Quality First Insurance to my friends who've been just as satisfied. If you're not happy with what you're paying for Medigap, or more importantly, not happy with your service, give us a try. We're locally owned, and we take the time to provide you with the best. We are Quality First Insurance, and our mission is to provide quality products to quality people. Pick up the phone and give us a call today at 800-745-1411.